So there's lots of ghost stories at the shore. I remember my father, when I was a kid, telling me the ghost stories about there's actually a place a couple of kilometers down the road called Ghost Hollow. And one of the ghost stories from there that is most vivid was actually about my family. My grandfather supposedly was one of the most honest people that you would ever meet. And he had told a story of uh, he was in a horse and buggy going through Ghost Hollow and he saw a man and he stopped and asked him if he'd like a ride and the man nodded. So we got in the wagon and they went up to the other side of Ghost Hollow and the man motioned that he wanted to get out. So my grandfather stopped and he turned around and there was nobody there. There was no footprints in the snow or anything. It was <laughs> so, yeah, it, it, I get goosebumps that's a, that's even cool talking story. about it. That's yeah. a cool story. What about uh, this location? You, you get some things here? Yeah, I've had some really strange occurrences here. Um, the, I think the first one that sticks out in my mind was back in 2007. Um, a very good friend of mine, well, he was a mentor to me, um, Jack Wagstaff, was a volunteer with the museum. and His father had actually been the last shipbuilder here. And he, he was almost like a second father to me because my dad at that time uh, was suffering dementia quite badly. So Jack sort of filled the void for me. And he hadn't been feeling well and he went, um, he was here and then he went back to see his doctor in St. John's. And he said he'd call me when he found out, you know, when he was coming back. And so um, I'd come in, the week before we'd gotten a couple of very nicely framed plaques and one was about his dad and I had them hanging side by side on the wall and they'd been up for a week no problem and I came in in the morning and I opened the door and the plaque was sitting against the wall on the floor and it, it wasn't on its face it wasn't crooked it was it looked like somebody had taken it off the wall and set it down and I thought well maybe my mother who had the keys maybe she had taken it down for something and so I didn't think anything of it and I put it back up on the wall and an hour later, my friend Jack called me and said, I've got bad news. I've got four weeks to live, and there's nothing they can do. And it was just, I got such a chill, because it was his father's plaque that had been sitting on the floor. And I asked my mother, because she was the only other one with the keys, if she had moved it, and she looked at me like I was just out of my mind. She said, well, it must have fallen, but I couldn't see any way it could possibly have fallen and not landed the way it was. So that, that was sort of the first thing that made me think, whoa, that's just really too coincidental of all the stuff in the museum that that would be the, the thing. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I get goosebumps even talking about it. <laughs> uh, my father, um, I was very close to my father and the baby, the family and the only girl, so we were very close. And my father passed away in 2011. And um, I, I've always kind of felt like he was with me. I've had some really bizarre things happen, um, especially at my home. I, there was one time I lost my uh, debit card for CIBC, which is bright, bright red. And I, I was so upset, I couldn't figure out where I'd left it. And I tore the house apart, my husband helped search. And I, I was in tears and I said, you know, I need that. You know, I'm so upset with myself. And I turned around, walked into the living room, and I have a white runner on the table. And it, right in the middle of that white runner was the CIBC card. And there is no way it was there before. It was just no way. And so things like this kept happening. I, my dad was a practical joker, so I could definitely see him doing this type yeah. of stuff. You know, I'd go to, to find a pencil sharpener, and it wasn't where I left it. And so after a while, I'd start joking and go, okay, Dad, I need the pencil sharpener. And within an hour, it would be somewhere that I know it wasn't put. And uh, my mom, she lives up the road here, and she, yeah, I, yeah, I'd tell her these things, and she'd kind of laugh at me, yeah, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And then one day, she called me up, and she had been looking for her broom. And she, she had been searching for a week for this broom. And she called, do you think you're, you know, the Jeff, did he take it out to the one with the shed? That looked, but, and I said, no, I, 
And she said, well, I've been looking for this damn broom for over a year. And I said, or for a week, and I said, I said, well, I stand for it back. She said, yeah, right. And I said, no, seriously. I said, you go stand in the middle of the living room and you say, Ross, it's not funny anymore. I want the damn broom back. She called me up two later, hours later and she said, you won't believe it. And I said, what? And she said, I did exactly what you told me. And I turned around and the damn broom was leaning against his chair. Against his chair. <laughs> and she had looked for it for a week and couldn't find it. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I think he haunts me. And yeah. <laughs> but he was always a practical joker in yeah. life. So, yeah. And I remember having talks about yeah. the paranormal with him because yeah. he had had you know, some, some intuition type deja vu thing. Yeah. And, uh, and we had said to each other at one point, you know, if there's, any, if, if there's an afterlife and you can come back yeah. and tell me, find a way to let me know. And I really think he has. I really mm -hmm. do. And about two, well, after we built this building, we put up the new TVs. And we have one in here and one in the other building. Yeah. And after this building opened, every once in a while, usually we turn the TV on in the morning so it's ready if people come in. And I'd come in and the TV would be off. And at first I thought, okay, well, you know, one of the guys or somebody has been turning it off. And so I started asking the staff, no, no, we never turned it off. We never turned it off. And so I'd come in, I'd turn it on again, and, and we'd wait an hour, and we'd come back, and the TV would be off. And it never ha started happening until we put the picture of my father up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So I, and I mean, we've, I'm sure, you know, I can't see it being the TV, because it's yeah. exactly the same as the other one, and the other one doesn't shut itself off. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I kind of think. <laughs> he's playing tricks on me here, too. I think he is doing <laughs> tricks, but it's... Just letting you know he's still here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. It is. It, you know, and, and it, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't uh, scare me or anything. It's actually quite comforting yeah. to think that he's still here. Antiques are pretty, but the natural. Antiques are pretty, but the natural.